happened to my F-122 drive driver. Driving him for Alpine, Alonso Fernando Alonso. And today we're here for part three and round three for the Spanish Grand Prix. Because Spanish Grand Prix, one of the new tracks that they've changed to real life and we're here in qualifying on the back of our first run a bit the right in Spain we didn't do it last year in a career mode but yeah this is the Grand Prix Welcome let's get into it to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix a race which saw Max Verstappen take victory on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016 after the dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today the circuit to Barcelona Catalonia then a high-speed 2.89 mile circuit which demands an efficient downforce package and bravery on the part of the driver especially through the blind right of turn nine which we might just see taken flat out this weekend let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside considering the rest of the grid we have Sainz Perez George Russell and Bottas Fernando Alonso Mick Schumacher Verstappen and Lando Norris Brown Vettel Daniel Ricciardo and Albert, Stroll, Joe, Nicholas Latifi and Kevin Magnussen, Sonoda and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot today. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming? when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. So, pretty easy one stop then, it looks like that. Because of the tyre roll, every race seems to be the exact same strategy. It's a bit of a shame, but possibly we can do something in this race as we do the formation lap. I have done this for each race, I just forgot to edit it in. And we get it purple there. And it's a horrible qualifying for Max Verstappen. But here we go then to the five red lights. They're out of a underway in Spain. And it's a good start from the Ferrari, Charles Leclerc straight away to cover off the Mercedes. Carlos Sainz on the outside. We're now looking if we can send it down inside anywhere. But we've got caught on the outside. And the players you don't want to be, but we do have the inside line for turn two. And now the outside, the turn three, when we go a little bit wide, Sebastian Vettel's up our inside. And he's still there. And he's going to send it. And we've hit. Sebastian Vettel have gone wide and we've lost multiple positions there and we dropped down at the back after we gained a few places at the start and now we've got Magnussen behind us our bomb have dropped behind as well and the Alfa Romeo and both McLarens I think as well there but now we need to get after Alex Albon but unfortunately just had no pace and Albon was getting away and we were left defending Kevin Magnussen for not the first time this season as we did back in Australia and Magnussen didn't come out on top that day but can we hold him off today we were saying around a second and a half behind Albon but he pulled away massively after Magnussen started battling it, battling us as he was having a look there and we've gone wide and Magnus has seen his chance to go up the inside and now around the outside of us at turn four turn five and fair play that was a good move and Yuki Tanoda now having a look at us as well and Magnus has gone absolutely bolted now and Yuki Tsunoda 
it's all over the back of his head. He's looking for a good result here after his DNF in Miami and that problem he had in Australia so he's still yet to score this season as Lance Stroll has found a way through and now Lance Stroll's going to be on the back of us as we look to have gone a little bit wide there we can't be overtaken by Lance Stroll we can't but we're leading a DRS train very much an Alonso train as we go wide we've gone through the brake marker board up the inside goes strong into turn 4 we try and hold it around the outside and we do hold it around the outside so we've gone wide there we stroll down the pit straight is alongside us again and we're just going to try and hang it around the outside again and we do and we squeeze in and now Yuki Sonoda is back past Lance Stroll is now in Yuki Sonoda on the back of us into turn 5 and now we don't get the best of exits and Yuki Sonoda gets a great exit we touch the grass around the outside of turn 6 let's fitness turn 6 and for you guys fair play is a great move and now Sir Lance a lot on the inside of us too far back but Stroll goes wide in Goat Latifi finds her way through and now we're still fighting Yuki Tsunoda we're not giving up we've managed to stay in touch with the Japanese driver we're going to pull to the inside and we're going to regain that position as we're very very aggressive squeeze Yuki Tsunoda off the track pretty much we were just left here just defending Albon and Magnus and gone down the road as we have a big moment on the curb nearly dropping it and now here comes Sonoda Stroll Latifi is making a free wide as you can see them pitting in the background Nicholas Latifi down the inside round the outside and Latifi has just done Yuki Tsunoda around the outside Yuki's not giving up though you can't be overtaken like that Yuki come on you've got to, you've got to stay ahead and he hasn't as Latifi's gone wide and Tsunoda locked up and now Lance Stroll is having a look there is Pierre Gasly getting in on the act as well side by side are they brave enough to go side by side through that blind corner yes they are both with the arrest so who's gonna break who's gonna give up does that large straw it is large straw and Gasly's through and as he is this is Carlos Sainz Carlos Sainz not at his home Grand Prix the championship leader is crawling to a halt here at his home Grand Prix and what a place to retire as well not only his home Grand Prix but on the pit straight as well and I was hoping for a safety car here I was going to pit on that lap but I saw the yellow flags so I decided to stay out as we go through the brake marker boards and now Yuki Sonoda on it again this time he gets the job done as Pete Gasly he's still looking for a way through and one lap later lap 13 we are going to come in to make our one and only stop of the day onto the set of the hard tyres as he completely missed time the the turning point onto the hearts we go now and now just gotta get our head down hopefully we can gain some time on those that are in front but these hard tyres are very just like they're good hard to get up to temperature 
has now out to the pits. This is Pierre Gasly, and Pierre Gasly has beaten us out by an absolute mile when he was two or three cars back from us. This is now Yuki Tsunoda, and in the background, Latifi, and I think Strausen as well. So if Gas is beaten out, we might be having a shocker here. So now that makes this one an only stop. And now out of the pits. And where are we? There is Sonoda. Out of the pits and we are nowhere to be seen. It's like it was in Australia with Magnussen. As through all of them have gone through there we are miles behind and this has not worked out for us as we just carried on falling back and back we had no pace on these hard tyres we only realistically had pace on the mediums because of the start as we've dropped it we've hit the wall we've ripped up our own front wing the front wing stuck on the top of the car and that has brought out the very first safety car of the career mode. Because I need a new front wing. I told you I was struggling on the hards and we've dropped it. Put it in the wall and now we're going to have to pit. going to go back onto the mediums. Charles Leclerc, you may be able to see there on the mini map, leading this race. If you don't come out in front of us, so we're not going to be able to unlap ourselves in time. So I just thought the safety car could save us. We've shot ourselves in the foot here because the safety car is going to catch, obviously, back up behind Leclerc. We're going to have to sit behind him and I decided to, for the settings to do the broadcast settings because I really can't be bothered to sit there getting brake checked during the safety car. So I thought I'd try, try the broadcast but for some reason the safety car didn't come in. You can see the lap, it came out on lap 19 and you can see it. No one's catching the safety car and the safety car came out on lap 19 and the final lap of the race was still out. I only ripped off my front wing and the safety car had actually helped actually caught up to those cars on the delta time. So I have no idea what's happened in this race. Very much a glitch there, you can see those. But yeah, we're going to finish on the safety car. What has happened here? Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way Another Spanish Grand Prix is over then, and what a special race it was. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. So that's been a very, very strange 
Spanish Grand Prix. Obviously it's a glitch, but this has been a heavy, very heavy from wing. And after I was doing the um, replays, the game crashed. So you saw the result from that race. And yeah, there's been some patches since I recorded this episode because um, I had to be just retired straight away because I recorded this the day after the game came out for early access so this is the actual result Sainz still ended up retiring not a clue what happened to Mitch Schumacher but he retired as well here is the standards and that DNF for Sainz who was on a roll it's really put him down in the standings and yeah hopefully the next race in Monaco will be better but yeah it must have been a very very heavy front wing for the safety car to be out for that long but I don't know what to call this episode but if you have enjoyed it very dodgy race be like Spa 2021 but we go to Monaco next, and I hope I see you there. Goodbye.